on this episode of Slancha. We head to rural Bear River, Nova Scotia. We'll meet the new owners at Bear River Vineyards, learn some vine managing techniques, and try some of the award-winning wines backed by centuries of tradition at this boutique estate, family-run winery. Today, I'm in the small town of Bear River. Nestled between Annapolis Royal and Digby, Bear River is a community of local artisans and culture. To find out more of the history of the location and how this boutique winery got started, I sat down with one of the co-owners, Darren. Bear River is home to the first vines that were ever planted in Canada. In 1611, shortly after the French settled in Port Royal, which is near here on the same body of water. And uh, so over 400 years of grape growing history in the area, which is fascinating on itself. The barn though is what really drew us in. And uh, the barn was built in 1883 and it served as a barn to the farmhouse across the road for over a century. And the previous owner, Chris, purchased it in 1989, and he began the process of converting it into what it is today, which is actually a gravity-fed winemaking operation. But he did a masterful job in his renovation, and uh, as you can see, even by the room that we're sitting in, you know, the architecture uh, is fascinating. It's a combination of what existed as an old barn and what he brought in to finish it off as a winery. Uh, the herringbone slate floors that he laid, really set the place off. So it's beautiful and we were really drawn to the history part of it, yeah. And you didn't know about it until you arrived here? We didn't, know. I mean, uh, you know, again, their website uh, needed some work when we first, uh, and they would be the first to admit that. Uh, they had a few pictures uh, quite focused on the wine, and it's a winery, so justifiably so. Uh, but really, the, the building itself is kind of the star of the show here. When we tour people through the building, even people that have been to, they'll tell us, you know, oh, I've been to your wineries all over Europe or wherever they're from, and, uh, but, to a person, they always say how unique this place is. Um, in fact, I'll offer people tours and some people will say no. And then as I start another group on a tour and I explain the gravity fed process and how we're standing on our crush pad when we're in the tasting room and how it flows through the building. Before I finish talking to the first group, I'll look around and I'm being followed by the whole rest of the group that had already said no to the tour because they, they immediately get kind of drawn in by that. So how many uh, vines do you actually have planted at this time? So we have about five acres planted, uh, and vines per acre is between 800 and 1,000. So we would have in the neighborhood of 5,000 vines. Uh, when we bought the business two years ago, there was only about three acres planted. So we've been busy the last two springs and planted nearly 2,000 vines over the past two springs to get the capacity up. Uh, and we have pretty much the whole five and a half acre vineyard, which is the trellised area. Uh, almost all of it's planted right now. We have just a couple of vacant rows that I'll tackle next spring. But our success rate on the vines, our take rate as they call it, on the vines we put in the ground was extremely high. You know, when they, when they do it by machine, they say you're gonna get like a 90% take rate because they're just roughly jamming them in the ground. Planting every vine by hand, we had uh, almost 100% take rate on the vines that we put in the ground. So we were very happy with that and just a little bit of tender loving care is, uh, goes a long way when it comes to the, the vines, yeah. So it must be very rewarding to be able to plant them yourself and then watch them grow. Yeah, it is. Uh, my, Sue calls them my babies and the, the lower vineyard in particular that I planted, the first vines I planted last spring in the lower vineyard are now up to the top wire and uh, we're gonna go out and work on those vines actually today awesome. uh, when we do a little bit of action in the vineyard and uh, they're doing well and they it really is a lot of pride in that. I think that only that comes second only to the pride of standing in the bottling line and when you've actually finished the product and you're standing there with a bottle of wine in your hand that you saw all the way from 
the picking of the grapes to the crush pad through the winemaking process and then you're standing there in the bottling room at the bottom of our gravity flow system and you know it's come all the way through the building and you've produced it start to finish yourself. I think the bottling of the finished product is still the most satisfying um, but I do love looking out at those, uh, those vines that I know I put in the ground by hand last year. And I shouldn't say all by myself. Uh, Richard, who works for us, um, lives up the road here. He's a great help. He did the whole digging and I did the planting. And uh, the whole digging is by far the harder part of that job. So I have to give him lots of credit. And, and uh, he did a ceremonial planting of one of the vines before we were done. I said, you can't just dig holes the whole summer and not have a vine that is your own. So he planted one vine uh, in a, a very uh, dramatic ceremony to say that he's put a vine in the ground too. But we don't do it all alone here. Um, we do work pretty hard at the business ourselves and it's a small operation. So we have to be hands on with everything but we do have great staff uh, Richard and Anita have been here uh, since before we owned it and uh, we're, we're very happy for the help they give us as well and they take as much pride as we do uh, they really do to find out more about how they found themselves in Bear River I spoke with the other half of this dynamic team co-owner and winemaker Sue we were looking for a way to get home we would spent most of our careers working in Ontario and we always knew that we wanted to come back here because this is where our roots are. So we originally started um, by looking at some property uh, down in the Yarmouth area where my grandmother had some property and we were looking for something kind of fun to do a, a second career. We realized pretty quickly that that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, so um, we just went online and started looking for other places and I literally ran across this place by accident. So now do you guys do everything together? Do you have separate roles? Who does like the, the wine making? Well, Darren pretty much does it all because um, I'm only still only here part time getting uh, the rest of our kids through school. Um, but when it comes to the winemaking, we're pretty collaborative on that front. I'm kind of the science and he's kind of the muscle. And is it as much fun as you thought it would be? Uh, it is, you know, it really is, but it's also a lot more work. Uh, Darren does the bulk of the work. I said he's never worked harder in his life, but he's also never been happier. Trading in the corporate life for this lifestyle has been fabulous. So. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to some of the challenges of owning your own winery and vineyard? Wow. Uh, I guess I think the first thing I would say is that you have to realize it is a business and it's not, not all just about the romance of the wine. Uh, it really does take a lot of uh, sweat equity to get it up and running. Obviously the freeze that we suffered last year was devastating, uh, but it was also in a way kind of enlightening and it really helped us realize how collaborative the industry is in Nova Scotia and how everybody kind of lent a hand to help those who had been you know, more severely affected. Uh, we were totally wiped out um, and so this year you know it's been difficult watching the vines rebound and knowing that these beautiful vines aren't really going to give us a lot of fruit this year. So I think a lot of it is about managing your expectations but also just believing and having confidence in what you're doing and and not being afraid to play around with the wines and make different decisions and come up with different products. Next up on Slancha. We take a tour of the gravity-fed system, and I get a hands-on lesson in vineyard management. The Greater Yellow Lex is the one that I like the most. Uh, also the Eft one, the red one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. It kind of took us back to being like in Europe. We've been to cellars in Europe and it kind of took us there a little bit when we were down there. So Wonderful. it's very nice, yeah, we like it a lot. Learning about Darren and Sue's journey back to Nova Scotia had been a heartwarming experience. Next, I was eager to find out more about their process of winemaking at Bear River Vineyards. So Darren, tell me about the gravity-fed system you have here. Sure, it is really one of the most unique features and was really some excellent foresight by the previous owner to take the natural layout of this barn and create this system. So the style of barn is called a bank barn, which simply means it's built into the slope of this rather steep hill that we're situated on, or the steep bank, so hence the name bank barn. There's two more floors below us as it's built into the slope of the bank, so guests who come in are immediately drawn to this story because they don't realize how big the building is till we've toured them through it. So the gravity fed process starts on this level and right where we're standing becomes our crush pad at harvest time. 
So we don't close and uh, guests love it because we still operate our tasting kind of on the side deck out there, weather permitting, and they can look through the window and watch the actual crush operation going on. The hose going through the hole in the floor directly into the fermentation level below us. And that's the start of our gravity fed process. Uh, so people love the fact that our tasting room becomes our crush pad. A lot of them ask me, does that mean you throw the grapes on the floor, step on them and watch the juice run down through the hole? It's the first question people ask when they see the hole. So that's not quite how we do it, but it's really not a complicated process. <laughs> so I'll take you down and show you where it flows from this point into the rest of the building. Sure, thank you. So this is the level where all the action happens from a winemaking perspective. And directly above your head is the hole in the floor that I pointed out from above. So we come down at harvest time, knock the plug out with a broom handle, and then we feed that hose off the crusher to stemmer uh, through the hole and directly into fermentation tanks that would typically fill the area where we're standing here. We don't keep them here all summer because they're empty and not needed. There's one exception to that, our oldest fermentation tank, and it is old. Uh, this right here is an old dairy tank. Uh, it would have been used for milk storage when this operated as a dairy farm many decades ago. We found a use for this old dairy tank as well. So uh, following fermentation, I'll show you how it flows down to uh, the rest of the operation right over here. Actually, before we bottle it, it obviously ages for a bit. We don't go directly from fermentation to bottling. So skipping through the middle section of the room, it would age in our stainless steel tanks for anywhere from a year to three or four years if it's a red, actually. And then we're ready to bottle. When we're ready to bottle, we let the gravity feed process kick in again. So these two tanks are a good example where they're situated right now for bottling. They're empty, we bottled those in the spring, but to illustrate, we simply get a gravity feed going, we get a siphon going from the tanks on this level. We open this old window and uh, we simply get the hose flowing down into the bottling operation, which is on the lowest level. So as long as the tank level is above the bottling level, once you get it flowing, no need for a pump, it gravity feeds into our filling operation on the lowest level. Oh, wow. Everything happens on site. We're 100% estate grown and bottled and uh, very happy to be so. After touring the inner workings of the winery and learning about their gravity fed system, I headed out to the vineyards for a demonstration in vineyard care. We're going to introduce you to our babies, our two-year-old Geisenheim. Actually, they're just over a year old. This will be their second season. So these were planted last spring, and uh, we're very happy with their progress. We're going to do three key things to them today to help their development. The first thing we're going to do is nip the tops off. So we're going to cut it off a few inches above the top wire. Okay. We don't need it to keep growing straight up to the sky. We're going to let it fill in. So uh, now that it's above the top wire, we're going to let it sit maybe six or eight inches above there and cut the top off. All right. The second thing we're going to do is look for any fruit that's developing on the vine. It's too young to bear fruit. Next season we'll look for it to do that, but for this season we're going to drop the fruit because we wanted to put all its energy into strong roots, trunk, and cane development. So no fruit. I can see a little bit on the next one that I'm going to let you cut off. Okay. And then the third thing we're going to do is kind of trim off any extraneous uh, uh, growth that we don't need. So okay. let's do those steps. We're ah. going to Trim the tie. I know it seems okay. painful, but it's okay. It does feel a little it, uh, painful. Doesn't kill it. Doesn't okay. hurt it. It helps it. All right. Um, this one doesn't happen to have any fruit on it. I've already done the fruit purge once or twice this year, so okay. uh, that's not surprising. And then by extraneous canes, these are these are water shoots that are coming off the main cane, and they're not going to add any value. They're just sapping energy to grow. So we're going to cut those two canes and this cane off. We're going to let it throw all its energy into the main cane as it's developing. Okay. We're going to cut some of these extra ones like that off and then leave these two to grow strong. And next spring, what we're gonna to wanna to do, this next year will be the fruiting year for this vine. We'll take these two canes and we'll tie them down one in each direction. And those will be the fruiting, up from those will grow the fruiting canes next year. Wow. So that's, uh, that's what our goal is today, is we're really, everything we do this year to this vine is positioning it for bearing fruit next year in its third year. Oh, that's okay. exciting, okay. Any questions? Not yet. Not yet? I don't want to hand you thing. the pruners. Okay. <laughs> so, this Swat next of... one is not above the top wire. So, a simple one to start with. Okay. We're going to let it keep growing. It's not above the top wire Perfect. yet. But I see part of why it may not be above the top wire compared to its neighbors is because it's already throwing a lot of energy into trying to bear fruit. Okay. So, they'll hide on you, but let's look through there. Okay. And anywhere where you see fruit, we're going to cut it yeah, off. Yeah, you're going to nip it off. Don't get too close to the stem because you don't want to cut into the main wood. Okay. But about halfway out between the fruit and the stem, you're going to nip that off. Are you here? Yep. Perfect. Do I just drop it? Yep. Just drop it. Don't eat it. Okay. Pretty bad. <laughs> it's hard, actually. I really it's very, didn't want it's, to. They're like little peas. Uh, and then that same with that one. Okay. And I think that might be... No. Oh, see, I see they right hide. Here. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You, good eyes. Yep. They they hide in amongst the leaves. They That's sure why I would have missed them the first time. They do. 
There we go. There you go. And then if these canes are not wound in between, you see how this is, it's attached to the wire, but it's not really wound in between. Yeah. So this is called tucking. So we're, yeah, we're not hurting it. Oh God. So we're gonna, <laughs> oh God. Uh, those tentacles are really strong. They're hard mm -hmm. to dress. So sometimes you can just straighten it by moving the tentacle along the wire. So okay. we just want the growth to go straight up through the wires like that last one. Okay. And this one you've kept three on? Yeah, we've only kept three. Two? It's okay. At two or three, uh, okay. with this amount of vigor, it's called, um, two or three is fine. Yeah. Cool. All, All right. right. Next guy? Next guy. So this one, you do want to nip the top okay. off, at least the tallest part. Maybe. Yep. <laughs> That's good. Here? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Done. Perfect. And this one has a little more work to do down here. It okay. does have fruit. All right. Let's and then some. it's got quite a few extra little growth happening here. So let's take let's take this off down low. Yeah, we want that one okay. off. Okay. Uh, and we want this one off right there. They're right here? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's not developing into anything. Okay. We, uh, and we actually have four on this one. Mm -hmm. So I think I would also like to take this one right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole one? The whole one, I know, I know. There you go. So we'll separate it and we'll get those three growing okay. nice and strong. All right. And then when we prune this vine in the upcoming spring, we'll make a choice between the three and two of the three are gonna be laid down, just like I said on that first one, to produce the fruiting canes for the following year. Isn't it hard? Like, I mean, you refer to them as your, like, your babies to like cut <laughs> off like little arms no, and stuff? No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's helping them. It's, it's helping, helping them, them grow. Next up on Slancha. We sit down to sample the wines of Bear River Vineyards. Featuring beautiful designs from local artists and techniques to preserve the natural flavors of the grape, each one is a fantastic journey of its own. It's our 40 year anniversary. We married in 1979. So we are like on a vacation. So we arrived last night here. Oh yes, everything is so beautiful here and peaceful and relaxing. And the wine? <laughs> yeah, we tasted six different wines. And uh, in my case, I love the, the red wine. So this is the 2015 Red Blanc. Beautiful, beautiful. We are, our families are farmers. So this kind of environment is is the best. We like it so much to be here, really. After a delightful day getting to know the history of the area and learning about the vines, it was time to sample some of the award-winning wines at Bear River Vineyards. Well, uh, you've been waiting for this all day, I know, and so... Uh, <laughs> I worked hard for it. Not so patiently. You did work hard for it, though. So we're going to take you through a flight of four of our wines here today. Uh, two whites and two reds. Uh, the first is our Pinot Gris. Okay. Uh, very unusual within Nova Scotia. Very few wineries growing Pinot Gris. And this is a 100% estate grown and bottled Pinot Gris. So what we try to do here is let the grape really express itself. And so because we're in a cool climate, that means that our grapes are naturally high in acidity. And sort of a winemaking trick is to balance out a little bit of sugar with the acidity to mask it. We've chosen not to do that and we've fermented to dryness. What that means is that we've taken all of the sugar out and change it into alcohol. Think seafood pairing, uh, appetizer pairing, some rich foods. It smells amazing, first yep. off. I ha obviously haven't had any yet, but it's very... It almost like smells like reminds me of like pear. Yeah, it's exactly pear what is I exactly say. Exactly what yep. we would have yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> like we said before you started, mm. we, we don't plant many seeds, but that is exactly the description that we would uh, refer to in our tasting notes and oh. and uh, have had suggested. That is very nice. What I really, what I really like about this is it 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 has such a freshness to it. Like, and but it. I know you're saying you're trying to let the grape do what it wants to do, but it doesn't feel overly manufactured. Does right. that make sense? Does, absolutely, and we do as little as possible to our wines. This wine is very dry, so 0.5 grams of residual sugar. You pretty wow. much can't get anything drier than that. Um, excellent pairing with very rich foods like uh, scallops or lobster, so think seafood with this wine. Mm. And... Um, I'm not going to tell you what notes you might pick up on this until you take your own first right. crack at it. You were bang on on the first one, so uh, this one is uh, definitely different than the first one. Uh, okay. Very unique. The three grapes in this blend are Geisenheim, Riesling, and mm. Chardonnay. Mm. I'm not getting any fruit notes that are coming up, but like it has a... People always think I'm funny when I describe wines. Nice. It has like a chalkiness, kind of like mm -hmm. a minerality exactly. mm -hmm. yeah. note yeah. to it. 
which yeah. I think is awesome, but people would be like, oh. No, there's a fair bit of mer uh, minerality in the soil here. There's a lot mm. of uh, slate and shale in our soil, mm -hmm. and there's a high percentage of Riesling. That's about 30%. It's about 60% guys and I'm 30% Riesling and 10 Chardonnay. No, uh, we'll let you go ahead, and then I'll, I'll tell you what oh, I was right. going to say, because okay. I, I thought you would actually already sip some. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't, so it's it's very interesting. It depends on my mood, what kind of a wine that I will reach for on what day. Yep. And maybe it's just because it's really hot right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I am really enjoying the dryness of the wines. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily reach for that, mm -hmm. but I really like it. It's, as you were saying, it's true to the grape. We have the oldest Pinot Noir vines in the province planted here. They were planted in 1993. Wow. When a lot of the wineries first started to appear in Nova Scotia, uh, there was a general thought that you had to grow hybrid grapes only here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Pinot Noir is a very delicate French vinifera. And uh, so our vines here, 26 years old, make, make them the oldest Pinot Noir that we're aware of in the province. Wow. So very light and fruity though. So mm -hmm. you notice how light that is for a Pinot Noir. Very. And again, we don't oak here. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, aged in stainless steel and it remains very fruit forward. Um, and again, I'm not gonna tell you what you should taste on it, but we'll, you've done excellent so far. So we'll let you, uh, <laughs> we'll let you go ahead. Uh, but also again, uh, very dry. Our reds as well are, are very dry. My first thought was cherry, but mm -hmm. then um, as I've been letting it sit and breathe, I, I'm getting a very strong strawberry note on it, mm -hmm. uh, but like fresh like field strawberries, not like the ones that are grown that are like really, yep. like yep. those like ones mm -hmm. used to pick like as a child and they're yep. like just growing, oh. yep. and they're just like so sweet and like. So people get the cherry, the strawberry, some people have said raspberry, so very much fruity on the nose and mm -hmm. a little bit less so, I'm cheating by telling you before, you haven't tasted it yet. But I figured. A little bit less fruity coming through on the palate yeah. at the end, uh, but very pleasant on the nose. My very technical terms. <laughs> hang out together. The strawberry and the rhubarb from like a pie is kind of mm -hmm. coming through for mm -hmm. me. Not the crust, I don't taste any of yeah. the crust, but that fruitiness <laughs> yeah. uh, of that tartness of the rhubarb and then like the mm -hmm. sweetness from the smell of the wine um, is, uh, is kind of what I'm getting. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's, that's the thing, right? When you smell fruits, it almost tricks your senses and mm -hmm. expecting it to be sweet. Mm -hmm. And really so much of what you taste is actually smell. Yeah. Right. We, there's really only five basic tastes, and the rest are the aromas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's that's very cool. I when I was smelling it, I was like, oh, it's like rhubarb, strawberry rhubarb pie. <laughs> So our fourth wine is our medal winner from Finger Lakes this past year, along with the Saunier Rosé. So these two were our, our first vintages and our first medal winners. And uh, this is our 2016 Red Aft. Uh, this is a two grape blend of Bac au Noir and Marshall Fauche. Okay. Those are two common hybrid grapes for cool climate viticulture areas, such as Nova Scotia. Yeah. This one is, I find, I don't know if it's just because I was expecting like it to be more oomphy, but it's I find it very light on the nose. I don't mm -hmm. get a lot. There's a like a slight kind of smokiness to yep. it, kind of like a whisper or a hint of like campfire. Or... Mm -hmm. mm. So that's what we what we would call a tertiary flavor that develops as it ages. So mm. there's primary flavors that you get from the grape themselves. There's the secondary flavors that occur uh, through the fermentation and the type of yeast and stuff mm -hmm. that are used, and then the tertiary, which happens with the aging. Most of your tertiary will come from oak, which we don't oak, but some of it is just the natural aging process. This is really good. Thank you. I, um, I tend to gravitate towards a red. I go for like more of a full-bodied uh, red, something with a lot of like mouthfeel, tan, yeah. and a little mm -hmm. bit of. When I know in Nova Scotia, harder to grow in yes. that in our climate. Yeah. This is very, very nice. Discovering the history of the area and learning about the vines and winemaking techniques with Darren and Sue had been an incredible experience. With exquisite views, amazing history, and one-of-a-kind refreshing wines. Bear River Vineyards is an absolute gem of a winery that you are sure to fall in love with.